daughter was born and we were up in the middle of the night and I was scrolling online like, oh man, I wish I could find someone who could help me get this girl to sleep. Think about the return on the investment for getting that result. You wanna you know, start with, okay, this is the result that I provide and then take it a step further and say, what is the return on that? If I could get someone this particular result, what will that really do for them? Hey, hey, Courtney Sanders here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to me, I'm a full-time online life and business coach as well as wife and mom. I wear all the hats and do all the things. And I know you are really interested in growing your business and you can't do that if you don't have people who are willing to pay you. And so that's what we were talking about in today's video because I get so many questions from, yeah, 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 all this is really great. You know, talking about building a coaching business and pricing yourself and coming up with packages and all of that good stuff. But how do you actually find people who are willing to pay you? and it's really not as hard as you think. I think we're overcomplicating this. And so I'm gonna demystify a lot of that in this video. And so if that's a question that has been on your mind, stay tuned, you're in luck because we're gonna get into it right now. Okay, the first step when it comes to identifying people that will actually be willing to pay what you offer is you gotta get clear on what is the actual result and the ROI of the result that you provide. So a lot of people struggle with this because they're focusing strictly on what it is that they quote unquote do, right? So, oh, I, I am a relationship coach and I help people have better marriages or um, I'm a nutrition coach and I help people with a particular dietary restriction um, eat healthily without uh, spending a lot of money or something like that. Um, I'm a parenting coach and or sleep training coach and I help babies go to sleep better, whatever, any of these things. We need to then say, what is the ROI of that result? So given the example of a you know, baby sleep specialist, right? I remember when I was in the throes of that just two years ago when my daughter was born and we were up in the middle of the night and I was scrolling online like, oh man, I wish I could find some someone who can help me get this girl to sleep, think about the return on the investment for getting that result. Especially in this example, maybe you're dealing with parents who um, are corporate professionals or maybe they run their own businesses and so sleep is really imperative because it helps them be better at their businesses which ultimately helps them make more money. Um, maybe sleep, if we're not gonna think about it from a financial standpoint, maybe sleep um, helps parents really uh, do better in their marriage and their relationships because they're not at each other's throats, you know, fighting over who stayed up with the baby later. So you'll want to, you know, start with, okay, this is the result that I provide and then take it a step further and saying, what is the return on that? If I could get someone this particular result, what will that really do for them? Because as the saying goes, no one really buys, you know, a nail, they buy a, a hole in the wall or no one, now I'm messing up the saying, no one buys a drill. That's what it is. No one really buys a drill. They buy a hole, right? So you're using a drill because ultimately you want to put a hole in the wall. And so you, your business and the programs and coaching that you offer is like that drill. But if someone takes you up on that and they're like, okay, I'm gonna buy your drill, what is the proverbial hole? Like what is it that they actually want as a result of taking your coaching program? That is something that you have to get clear on. That is the first step to finding people who are actually willing to pay you. So once you identify what the actual return on investment is that someone uh, is looking to get, you'll wanna ask yourself, of these people, who are the people who have the most to gain from this, right? So using our um, previous examples, if we're saying um, I'm doing sleep training and I'm doing it for um, couples as a, in the ROI is that they're gonna have healthier marriages and you know um, sustain their relationship through the new baby period without a lot of the drama that a lot of people face. Ask yourself, of all the people that I can kind of get those results, for whom is it, the the highest return on the investment right um and so maybe it's couples who work together who work together in business and so maybe they work from home together they're at home all the time and so it's really imperative that their relationship and their marriage stay strong because if you know the marriage falls apart it's also going to affect uh, the family business and everything else because they are together so that's just an example of of all the people right who want their kid to go to sleep and of all the people who want you know um to stop fighting in their marriage there's certain demographics or certain pockets of people 
within those demographics that get a higher ROI from that result. Those are the people that you really wanna zero in on because those are the people who are gonna have a greater sense of urgency and a greater willingness to pay you. All right, and the next thing, which is really simple, is you'll wanna think through where do those people congregate? And I say this is simple and I know people are like, well, seriously, where, I, where do I find them? But this is, you have to get that profile of that person in mind. So I'm literally making this up on the fly, by the way, for this video in terms of this example. But for the sake of this example, you know, we've identified um, new parents who either work from home together or work together in business. And so you're gonna pitch them your uh, sleep training, coaching services. Now it's an uh, opportunity to figure out where they congregate. Most people, the mistake that they make is they wanna find communities that are just for um, those people, right? Or that are titled like, oh, this is the Facebook group for couples that work together. And while there might be Facebook groups or certain online communities designated just for people who are like that, you wanna think more broadly and say, if I I were this type of person, what are the types of things that I would be involved in? What are the types of places that I would go? Are there chamber of commerce, you know, meetings that this, um, you know, couple that works together are likely to go to. Maybe it's something as simple as a coffee shop, right? There might actually be a local coffee shop in your area that a lot of people who work from home choose to go to because that's just their favorite place to get work done. And so if there's couples that work together, you might run into them at this coffee shop, you know, talking shop or talking about business or whatever, because that's a place where they are. So that's an example of like a literal physical place that you can go where you're finding your people. Also think about what are some places that they're likely um, in or participating in that have nothing to do per se with um, the actual demographic, but it's just something that they like, right? So an example um, that I give a lot is uh, the Peloton's moms group on Facebook, right? Um, so oftentimes, uh, people are looking to target moms and I'm like, well, make sure that you're targeting this Peloton moms, you know, Facebook group because these moms like working out on the Peloton and I'm one of them because they don't have to go to the gym. It's easier for them to care for their children. And then when the kids are down for the nap, they can, you know, hop on the Peloton and get a quick workout in. And so a place where they congregate that might have nothing to do with, uh, maybe the type of demographic. So for instance, in our example, we're talking about this couple that works together. Maybe you want to target the mom and the relationship, you know, you could say, oh, okay, I'm gonna find um, a place just for um, moms that work with their spouse, but I'm saying it might just be in a general community like Peloton's mom's group where she also is in. Um, different parenting groups, um, different fashion and style groups if she's into fashion, home decor groups if she's into home decor. This is what I'm saying. Think more broadly about what are the general interests that somebody like your target market would be into. Find out where they congregate and that's a great place to find them. And then lastly, you don't wanna sleep on in-person places. And so I know I alluded to this in the last point, but I, can, I cannot tell you how many clients just here locally in Houston, I have connected with and I've made just by virtue of attending conferences in my local area, attending networking events, attending various meetups. I think because of the explosion of online business and you know social media and running ads and how easy it is to like cherry pick and find your perfect person based on all of these uh, targeting metrics, we forget that in-person is still a great way to land clients, especially if you're just getting started because people like to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And so if you're the type of person that keeps showing up at a particular, I don't know, Toastmasters meeting, or again, Chamber of Commerce meeting, or some local place where your target market is actually congregating, and they start to remember you and put a face with a name, it makes it that much easier that when they realize that they have this particular problem that you solve with your coaching program, you can become a go-to resource because they've actually connected with you in real life. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you're still like, oh, but I don't know, I really invite you to join my free Nail Your Niche Challenge. This is a five day free challenge, but it's free for the time being. I can't promise that it's gonna be free forever, but over the course of five days, we really show you how to drill down, nail your niche, and really identify that target market and that pocket of people that you want to target and really uh, help serve them and it's also gonna help you grow your business. So if that's something that you're interested in, again, it's free as of this recording. I can't promise it'll be free by the time you click the link, but you could try, go ahead and click the link. And if it is free and you see a challenge coming up soon, make sure that you enter in your information and register ASAP. All right, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you can't wait for my next video, make sure you are following me on my podcast, The Courtney Sanders Show on both Spotify and iTunes. And if you can't wait for my next podcast episode or my next YouTube video, 
video, make sure you are following me on Instagram. Courtney L. Sanders on Instagram. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.